Good evening and welcome to another session of the Comfort Verses in Context. For our study tonight, we want to have a biblical understanding of the term gospel. Now, this is our first broadcast of 2021, and I think it is very important that the first thing that we would clarify is what the gospel is. So, as we have done before, we're going to go into this study and we will answer two important questions. Question number one is this, is there only one gospel in the scriptures? Now, we read this in passing in Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 to 7. If you have your Bibles with you, please turn it with me and let us read what the Word of God says. It says there, these words, I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. So if you are paying close attention to that passage, and if you have seen it in, your, in the word of God right before you, you would realize that there is another gospel, which is another as Apostle Paul warned against another gospel, which is not another. It's something to think about. And the question is, what are these gospels? So we will go through the whole of scriptures, examining every time the term gospel occurs, and we would see what this gospel is, and we will look at it from Genesis to Revelation, paying close attention to the dispensational context of the word occurrences. We call this a dispensational word study. So the first question is, is there only one gospel in the scriptures? And number two question is, what is the gospel that saves in this dispensation of grace? So if there is more than one gospel, which gospel saves in our time today? So let us embark on our study and let us first limit the scope of our study looking at the occurrences of the biblical term from the Gospels to the book of Acts. Now let us see that the word gospel actually occurs in our scriptures 101 times in 95 verses. You can bear in mind that it never occurs in the Old Testament. All of its occurrences are in the New Testament. Fifteen times it occurs in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And it appears five times, uh, six times in the book of Acts, and 74 times in the Pauline epistles. Five times in the Hebrew epistles, and one time in Revelation. By that mere statistics, we would see that the bulk of the usage of the term Gospels occurs in the Pauline epistles. Now, we will limit our study tonight looking at the occurrences from the Gospels and the book of Acts. And it is interesting to note that the Gospel occurs in the Gospels five times in Matthew, six times in Mark, four times in Luke, but none in the book of John. Six times it occurs in the book of Acts, and my prayer is that you would reserve judgments and conclusions as we look at the occurrences of the term and make it after the study. But we will be looking at the following things. Number one, the bearers of the gospel. It is important to note who is talking and who is bearing the gospel that is given. Number two consideration is the audience. Who is being addressed by that gospel? And number three, which is actually the most important, what is the content of the gospel? Now, there's one thing that is a problem in many churches today, in many Christians as well. And that's the fact 
that many of us do not actually know what the gospel is, much more what the gospel is in this dispensation that saves. We have to bear in mind who is talking, who is being addressed, and what is the content of the gospel. Also, we are going to look at the peripheral details as we study the occurrences of the term one by one. Now, let's begin our study with the first occurrence in the gospel. So please, turn your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 4, verse number 23. Matthew chapter 4, verse 23. This is the first occurrence of the term gospel in the gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 4, verse number 23 says this, And Jesus went about all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing all manner of sickness and all manner of disease among the people. So first stop, who is preaching the gospel? And you see in the passage, it is Jesus Christ. We have to also see that this gospel is preached in the Galilean synagogue. The audience, therefore, would be Israel. And it, the, it is accompanied by signs and wonders. And it's important to know that the content of that gospel is the kingdom. So what about the kingdom? That the king is here. The king, Jesus Christ, the Messiah, is already present. The people of Israel must repent and receive him, confess him, as the Son of God, the King of Israel. It's a different content. The content is the kingdom, and similar passages would be Matthew chapter 9, verse 35, <clears throat> where we also read, And Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in, the sin in their synagogues, and preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Now you see, that the content of this gospel is that the kingdom is at hand simply because the king was present then. It's a different gospel than the gospel of the Lord Jesus' death for our sins, burial, and resurrection. Why do you think it is? Well, the simple answer is that at the time of writing, at the time that is being referred to in Matthew, the Lord Jesus had not yet died, nor was he buried, nor had he risen again. So the gospel of the kingdom is not talking about the death of Christ for our sins, burial, and resurrection. It is primarily for Israel. It's accompanied by signs, and it's all about the kingdom. Another occurrence is in Matthew chapter 11, verse 5, where it simply says, gospel. Now let me read to you Matthew chapter 11, verse Number five, the word of God says this. The blind receive their sight, and the lame walk, and the lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear. The, uh, the dead are raised up, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. So this gospel is preached by Jesus Christ. The audience would be the poor in Israel. Now the content of this is similar to the gospel of the kingdom, because the gospel preached to the poor, especially in Matthew chapter 11, verse 5, and its surrounding uh, verses, it speaks about what the Messiah will be doing when he is on earth. So this is a messianic prophecy. This is a messianic prophecy fulfilled by Jesus Christ. And the gospel that is being preached here is the gospel of the kingdom. This is, again, accompanied by signs and wonders, and similar passages would be from Luke chapter 7, verse 22. And we would also see in Matthew 24, verse 14. There's a, this is another verse, Matthew chapter 24, verse 14. And I want us to see that Matthew 24, verse 14 speaks about the future tribulation period and the coming kingdom when Jesus returns again. This is the context of Matthew 24. Now we read Matthew 24 verse 14 says these words, And this gospel 
and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then the end shall come. So this is preached by the disciples in the Great Tribulation. Now hold on for a second. If in Matthew chapter 9, Jesus is preaching the gospel of the kingdom in Israel, and then the gospel of the kingdom is also preached during the tribulation period, does it not say that the gospel's dispensation and the dispensation during the time of the tribulation are the same? Now, that's something to really bear in mind. Now, this is preached by the disciples in the Great Tribulation. This is preached all in all the world. The audience would be all nations, but the content, as we would see the gospel, it is the gospel of the kingdom. And this is accompanied by the end coming when the gospel is preached to the end of the earth. Now, similar passages would be from Mark 13, verse 10, that reads the gospel and the gospel must first be published among all nations. So that's it. Another one, another verse, occurrence of the term gospel, is in Matthew chapter 26, verse 13. Now the word of God says this, Verily I say unto you, Wheresoever this gospel shall be preached in the whole world, there shall also this that the, this woman hath done be told for a memorial of her. Now, this speaks about Mary anointing the Lord Jesus. And the Lord said that whenever this gospel is preached, it will be a memorial for her. So this is preached by those who will preach this gospel. And this is preached in the whole world. The audience is once again Israel. And this is accompanied by the memorial of Mary's act of anointing Christ for his burial. Now, similar passages would be Mark 14 verse 9. Now, here's another occurrence from the Gospel of Mark. Mark chapter 1, verse 1. And the Word of God says this, The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. So the audience is Israel. The preacher is actually the Gospel writer, which is Mark. The content is about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Now, here's the thing. When you say Jesus is the Son of God, this speaks that He is the rightful King of Israel. He is God manifest in the flesh, and He is also the Messiah, the rightful King of Israel. The Gospel of Mark speaks about how this Messiah will serve. Now, similar passages would be Mark chapter 1, verse 14 to 15. And if you would read that, it says this. Now, after that John, this is John the Baptist, was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. So here we see again that this gospel is preached by Jesus Christ in Galilee for Israel and the content is the kingdom and the accompanied work is that it's to repent and believe this gospel the idea here is that since the king is already present the kingdom is at hand the people of israel are supposed to repent and believe that their king is finally here now you see that this gospel speaks about the gospel of the kingdom of God and it speaks about who the Lord Jesus is pertaining to Israel. And maybe you're wondering, why is it always that Jesus Christ preaching of the gospel pertains to Israel? Because in Romans chapter 15, the Lord Jesus is said by the Apostle Paul that he is the minister for the circumcision, for Israel. So that's why the focus of Jesus' ministry is Israel. Because He, as the Messiah, is supposed to be the one who will reign in Israel over all nations. Now let's continue with another occurrence of the term gospel. Now let's turn our Bibles to Mark chapter 16, 
verses 15 to 18. Now, this part of the Gospel of Mark is actually parallel to the Great Commission. But many fundamental Baptists do not use this passage when it comes to the Great Commission. Now, let me show you why. Mark chapter 16, verses 15 to 18 says this, And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. So far, so good. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils, they shall speak with new tongues, they shall, they shall take up serpents, and if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So, who is preaching? The disciples are commissioned to preach this gospel. The audience is Israel, but the scope is the world. Now, the content is very clearly the kingdom and it is accompanied by signs and wonders and the message to believe and be baptized now here's the thing if it's the same gospel as the gospel that is for our dispensation we see that this is a direct contradiction of Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 and 9 for it is written there that for by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. But in this gospel, it says that he must believe and be baptized. This is actually parallel to the preaching of the Apostle Peter in Acts chapter 2. That too is accompanied by signs and wonders, speaking of tongues, etc., and the gospel message there is to repent and be baptized. There's a difference. For our gospel, it is simply that we believe in what Jesus has done. Whereas in their gospel, it's a gospel that is supposed to be accompanied by works. Now, we would see another occurrence of the term gospel in Luke chapter 4, verses 17 to 19 Luke chapter 4 verses 17 to 19 speaks again of how the Messiah would fulfill the messianic prophecies now let's look at this in Luke chapter 4 verse 17 to 19 the word of God says this and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias so this is Isaiah and when he had opened the book he found the place where it is written the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, and to set, uh, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. So who's preaching? It's the Messiah. And Jesus said, this was... This is fulfilled in him. Again, the audience is the poor in Israel, and the content is the gospel of the kingdom because Jesus is saying, what the Messiah is doing, that is what I'm doing because Jesus is the Messiah. Now, this is a cross-reference from Isaiah 61 verse 1, and another occurrence of the term gospel is in Luke chapter 9 verse 6. Now, Luke chapter 9 Verse 6 says this, And they departed and went through towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. So the question is, who is preaching? Now this would be the disciples sent out by Jesus Christ. Now it is interesting to note that they went into towns everywhere, but the audience is Israel. They're actually instructed in the context not to go to any Gentiles but to preach the gospel of the kingdom to Israel. Now the content would be, it's stated in Luke chapter 9 verse 2, and it says, And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God and to heal the sick. So it's accompanied again by signs and wonders. In Luke chapter 20 verse 1, that's another occurrence of the term gospel. Luke 
chapter 20, verse 1, it says this, And it came to pass that on one of those days, as he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel, the chief priests and the scribes came upon him with the elders. So who's preaching? That's Jesus Christ. And he is preaching in the temple. And since he's in, in the temple, the audience would be primarily Israelites. The content is the kingdom of God again. And it is accompanied by opposition from the religious leaders. Now, you would see that from Matthew to Luke, since there's no occurrence in the Gospel of John, every time the term gospel is used, it speaks about the preaching of Jesus Christ and of the apostles, and it's centered for Israel, and its message is the gospel of the kingdom of God. Now, let's see this develop as we go through the study in the book of Acts. Now, let's begin with Acts chapter 8, verse number 25. Acts chapter 8, verse 25. Okay? The Word of God says this. Acts 8, 25. And they, when they had testified and preached the word of the Lord, returned to Jerusalem and preached the gospel in many villages of the Samaritans. Now we see that this is preaching of Peter and John, and they preached in the villages of the Samaritans. Now the audience would be Israel. And maybe you'll say, wait a minute, I thought they were preaching to Samaritans. I want you to remember that Israel, in the time of David and Solomon, were was one nation. When Solomon died, under Rehoboam, there is a divide of the kingdoms. The southern kingdom is comprised by two tribes, Judah and Benjamin. Now, the word Judah became the southern kingdom, and those who are of that southern kingdom are in the end called Jews. Now, do you remember that? Because Judah, Jews, okay? Now, the northern kingdom would be the ten tribes and the capital of the ten tribes which is called Israel the capital would be Samaria so you see the Samaritans are Israel you see so the audience would be Israel and the content would be the word of the Lord regarding the kingdom it is still a kingdom the kingdom gospel it's accompanied by signs and wonders as well Another occurrence in the book of Acts would be Acts chapter 14, verse 7. And here, there's a different preacher. Acts chapter 14, verse 7 says this. Acts 14, 7. And there they preached the gospel. Now, in Acts 13, verse 49, we would see that this gospel was preached by Paul and Barnabas, and this is in Lystra and Derbe. Now the audience became both Jews and Gentiles. Now here's the thing. The content, what are they preaching? Are they preaching about the gospel of the kingdom? Now let's look. Can you turn your Bibles with me to Acts chapter 13, verses 38 to 39? Acts chapter 13, verse 38 to 39. And the word of God says this, Be it known unto you, therefore, men and brethren, that, though, that through this man is preached unto you the forgiveness of sins. And by him all that believe are justified from all things from which he could not be justified by the law of Moses. Now think about it. Number one, talks about, it doesn't mention the kingdom in the preaching. And number two, it offers forgiveness of sins right away. Now, just a little review. If you look back to Acts chapter 2, where Peter was preaching to Israel, he's calling them, repent and be baptized. And he said that, that forgiveness would come when the Messiah is present. It's future forgiveness. But Apostle Paul and Barnabas, 
were offering forgiveness right there and then. Another difference you would see is that in verse 39 of Acts chapter 13, the offer is that all that believe are justified. You see? Now the term justified means to be declared righteous. To stand before God and say, you are righteous. But the thing is, the righteousness does not come from the works of the law. We see that it says there that, that all that believe are justified from all things from which ye could not be justified by the law of Moses. The gospel that is being preached here is different. It's not the gospel of the kingdom. It's not the gospel that calls you to repent, believe, and be baptized. A gospel that is without works. A gospel that simply says, believe and you will be justified. I think it will be expounded as we look more. But let's continue. In, this is actually another this passage. Uh, this passage in Acts chapter 14 verse 7 is, has similar passages like Acts 14 verse 21. Let's turn to that. And it says there, And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and uh, to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch. Another verse is Acts 16 verse 10. And after he had seen the vision, immediately we endeavored to go into Macedonia, assuredly gathering that the Lord had called us, called us for to preach the gospel unto them. Now we will look at what that gospel is a little later. Okay. Another occurrence of the term gospel is in Acts chapter 15 verse 7 and it says there and when there had been much disputing Peter rose up and said unto them men and brethren ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe now this is preached by Peter and the audience would be Gentiles because he's referring to the house of Cornelius. The content would be the gospel still of the kingdom because it's, uh, because it's talking about the God-fearing nature of Cornelius. But there's something different there. In the account of Cornelius, he was listening. Cornelius in his house was listening to Peter's preaching. And before they can do anything, the Holy Spirit already descended. This signals a shift, okay? And we will see more as we would see Acts 20 verse 24. Now this goes back to the Apostle Paul again and we read what the Apostle Paul testifies. And he says, Acts chapter 20 verse 24, it says, But none of these things move me. Neither count I my life dear unto myself, so that I might finish my course with joy and the ministry which I have received of the Lord Jesus to testify the gospel of the grace of God. Now you see, so far, we see two distinct gospels. We see the gospel of the kingdom for Israel by Jesus and the apostles. But here we see the gospel of the grace of God, different to Acts chapter 13 and 14, and it is preached by the Apostle Paul. The audience would be Jews and Gentiles. The content will be about the grace of God. Now, I want us to realize that the concept here of the grace of God is focused not on what we have done. You see? Now, the gospel of the kingdom is focused on who is present and what Israel will do. But in the gospel of the grace of God, it's focused on what Jesus had done, which Apostle Paul will expound in 1 Corinthians 15 verses 1 to 4. Now, here we see at least two gospels. We're beginning to answer the first question. But we see two true Gospels with different bearers, content, 
and objects. We see the gospel of the kingdom preached by Jesus Christ and the apostles for Israel. And we're beginning to see the gospel of the grace of God by the apostle Paul for Jews and Gentiles in the church, the body of Christ. Now we will see this develop more as we look at the usage of the term gospel in the Pauline epistles. Now there is a contrast between the gospel that the apostles brought for Israel and the gospel that is brought by the apostle Paul for the church which is the body of Christ. We will learn more as we expound that but let me declare to you today the ultimate difference of what the gospel that Apostle Paul brings, which made it the gospel of the grace of God. Now, if you would turn your Bibles with me to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 to 4, we could read what exactly is the gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 to 4 says this, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, and that he was buried, according uh, that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Now, if you would notice, what made it the gospel of the grace of God is that it's centered on what the Lord Jesus had done for us. In Apostle Peter's preaching, he lays the blame for Israel seeing the signs of who Jesus is, yet still crucified the Prince of Life. But for us, in this dispensation of grace, the Apostle Paul tells us that it is for our benefit that Jesus died. The call of the Gospel is to believe that Jesus Christ's death on the cross for our sins, burial and resurrection is sufficient for eternal salvation. My friends, we have to trust in Christ's finished work, being delivered for our offenses and raised again for our justification. This is the gospel that saves in our dispensation. And the only way for us to be saved is not by the works that we do. It's not by the merits that we have. No. But what Jesus has done. That we believe that what the Lord Jesus has done, dying for our sins, being buried, and the third day rising again, is sufficient to make us justified before God, to reconcile us to God, to save us eternally, and to make us part of the body of Christ. My prayer tonight is that you will see this truth that as you start the year, you clarify what is the gospel and how can a person be saved in this dispensation. Because the truth is, you cannot be saved by the kingdom gospel. You cannot be saved by praying a prayer. You cannot be saved by being baptized or being a member of a church. No. There's only one gospel in this dispensation and there's only one way to be saved in this dispensation of grace. So I pray that as you listen to the word of God tonight, that you would look at the scriptures and ask yourself, what is the gospel and how can a person be saved in this dispensation? Thank you very much for listening. We do pray that you would clarify the gospel message to yourself, to your family, and to those who are around you. And we pray that we would be able to see you in our future broadcast. We pray that we could release a new video on Monday on the Family Equipping Ministry. And every Thursday, we have our Home Prayer Meeting and the Ephesians Bible Study.
and hope we would see you again next week for another session of the Comfort Verses in Context where we would see the usage of the term gospel in the Pauline epistles. So thank you very much for listening. Do have a nice day and the Lord bless you.